Namaste children. How are you all? I think everyone are safe. Stay home, stay safe. Uh, we have planned for few online classes in this lockdown period. Uh, because we don't want to miss any of your any of our classes so that the topics also will go on uh, now let me introduce myself i am the chemistry teacher of sjsvm mrs sita rajalakshmi now i am going to do the 12th few topics for jayendra students as well as ravila as per our correspondent ma'am priya ma'am's instruction we have planned for few classes and let us see how it goes uh, here the topic which we are going to do is d block elements uh, for as the topic is similar for the cbsc and for the metric side i have planned to do the same topics so d block elements for the cbc and transition elements for the metric the page uh, the lesson comes to page number 100 today we will see only the introduction part before that there are certain instructions for you when we when you watch this video please make sure you take notes and the content part should be written in your notebook on the right side and the notes which you are observing that means listening should come on the left side as and when this topic is done you have simultaneously we are uploading the notes for this topic also where you can get benefited for few prerequisite knowledge of this topic and few few terminologies if you are not able to understand you can just look at the notes so you can do the topic in a good way if you have doubts you can pass it on to me through my mail id i will be giving you my mail id where you can send your questions and your clarifications to my mail now um, as i told you this is a new system what we have introduced from our school the online class let us see how far we can do well it is very new to us and even to you it might be like one or two classes we will feel some kind of difference after that it will become all right now here first the introduction of d block elements it is part 1 class Mm, we will be doing the introduction plus the electronic till the electronic configuration today we will complete here first initially let us explain where does this d block element exist in our periodic table we have studied about this topic periodic classifications in our 11th where we come across with the blocks where are these blocks present in the periodic table the modern periodic table so when we look at it the s block elements come to the left side of the periodic table the p block comes to the right side of the periodic table in between these two you have the d block elements why are they called as d block elements the main reason is the incoming valence electron will enter into the d subshell so we know s p d f are the subshells which is present if the electron enters into one particular subshell then we call that element belongs to that block so accordingly when we look at the periodic table we can very well understand that the left side is the s block and the right side is the p block in between these two we have the d block elements now you can see in the slide the periodic table so when we look at the periodic table the first two groups we call it as the s block to the right from 13 to 18 we call it as the p block 
and in between that that is from 3 to 12 the groups you call it as the d block now these d block elements can also be called as transition elements what is the meaning of transition elements it's not it's uh, really how do we explain is s block elements show the character of metals the p block element shows the character of non metals so from a metallic to a non metallic in between these two we have the elements called the d block so we call them as a transition transition from metal to a non metal in between these two we have so we call them even as transition elements so all the d block elements are called as transition elements let us come up with that explanation later now before that let us explain why do we call how do we predict whether that particular element will belongs to which block now here i have taken few examples the first example is calcium the cal calcium contains an atomic number of 20 so the electronic configuration for the valence shell if we notice it comes as 4s2 the last electron enters into the s sub shell so the shell number is 4 the subshell which is indicated is s subshell where the final electron valence shell electron is 2 electrons we can state that calcium belongs to s block as it contains 2 electrons we can state that calcium belongs to the group 2 element in the periodic table the same way in case of sulfur the atomic number is 16 when we look at its configuration it comes as 3p4 the last shell electron enters into the p subshell so we we can we can very well understand yes belongs to sulfur belongs to the p block element so the same way let us consider the third example as vanadium which contains an atomic number of 23 now when we look at its electronic configuration here we can write it as 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 then comes 3p6 after that we write it as 4s2 and 3d3 now instead of 18 electrons we can even write it as argon with 4s2 and 3d3 so the valence shell is the fourth shell we, en we make 4s2 we fill the 4s orbital first and then the 3d orbital because based on off boss rule the orbital which contains less energy will be filled in first so here the valence electron is entering into the d orbital so we call vanadium also as an d block element now we have got a very clear picture i think children you are able to understand when we pick out an element and find where is its position or to which block will it belong to how can we understand it when we work out its subshell configuration we can understand that the valence electron to which subshell the electron moves we can tell that particular element belongs to that subshell so i think it's uh, clear now as we explained the d block elements exist in the middle of the periodic table that means in between the s block and the b and the p block um, the valence shell electron enters into the d orbital so we call them as d block elements so when we look at the transition elements we have three series the d block first transition series the 3d the second transition series the 4d series and then the third series is 5d now when we consider the first transition series the elements start from scandium and ends with zinc let us see its configuration now you can understand here when we look at this slide uh, scandium with atomic number 21 
and zinc with atomic number 30 so we know d block can contain maximum of 10 electrons so the meaning is the d block will have each series will have 10 elements so scandium starts with d1 and zinc ends with d10 in all these elements of the first transition transition series we can see the 4s orbital with 2 2 electrons okay now we have explained why do we call these elements as d block because the valence shell electron enters into the d sub shell now can we call all these elements as a transition elements what is the condition now if we call all these elements as transition elements the first rule is if it is belonging to a d block or we call it as a transition elements then it should have incompletely filled d orbitals either in the ground state or in its oxidation state the meaning is if i consider scandium when i take scandium plus configuration the 4s electron will be lost so where you will have argon 3d1 and 4s1 for scandium plus so that means scandium contains the incompletely filled d orbital in case of zinc when i take its oxidation state or in the ground state in the ground state we have the configuration as argon 4s2 3d10 when i take its oxidation state as zn2 plus then the configuration will be argon 3d10 so the d orbital is completely filled the main condition if you are if we have to find out whether it is a d block or a transition element it should contain the incompletely filled d orbitals so zinc does not belong to the transition element but it belongs to the d block so all the d block elements cannot be called as a transition element so we can look at this slide here all the d block elements are not transition elements because the d block elements like zinc have fully d10 configuration in its ground state as well as their common oxidation state meaning zn2 plus which is not according to definition of transition elements according to the definition of transition elements it states that the element should have incompletely filled d orbitals so in case of zinc when it exists as zn2 plus also we can notice that the d orbital is completely filled it is d10 it does not have incomplete d orbitals that is the reason zinc belongs to the d block but it is not a transition element so two points we have discussed here one is what is d block element now we know when the valence shell electron is entering into the d orbital we call them as d block elements the second concept is is all the d block elements called as transition elements first we know the meaning of transition elements why we call the d block as transition because it is present in between the s and the p block the second point is why do we call them as transition elements is because it should contain the incompletely filled d orbitals now you can very clearly understand from this slide a transition element is the one which contains incompletely filled d orbital in its ground state or in any one of its oxidation state meaning this uh, the same examples you can consider we can even take vanadium in case of vanadium the atomic number is uh, 23 uh, vanadium when we work its configuration please children have your um, class work to work out its configuration then you will have a better knowledge what what i am explaining in vanadium the atomic number is 23 so that means argon then you have uh, 3d3 and 4s2 if i consider vanadium 3 plus then what will be its configuration can you please work out and see its uh, its uh, configuration is argon uh, 4s0 and 3d2 
द मीनिंग द डी ऑर्बिटल कंटेन्स द इनकम्प्लीटली फिल्ड डी ऑर्बिटल सो वी कैन स्टेट वेनाडियम बिलोंग्स टू द डी ब्लॉक बट इन केस ऑफ जिंक वेन वी सी इट्स कॉन्फिग्रेशन ऑर्गॉन फोर एस टू थ्री डी टेन वेन वी टेक इट्स ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट ऑल्सो जेड एन टू प्लस कंटेन्स ऑर्गॉन थ्री डी टेन सो दैट मीन्स जिंक बिलोंग्स टू द डी ब्लॉक बिकॉज इट कंटेन्स इलेक्ट्रॉन इन द डी ऑर्बिटल बट इट इज नॉट कॉल्ड एस अ ट्रांसिशन एलिमेंट्स बिकॉज इट डज नॉट हैव द इनकम्प्लीटली फिल डी ऑर्बिटल नाउ लेट एस डिस्कस अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रॉनिक कॉन्फिग्रेशन of the first transition series here when we see all these elements you can notice the 4s orbital is filled with two electrons except in chromium and copper chromium has an atomic number of 24 so the configuration is argon 4s2 3d4 this is what we will expect but that is a wrong configuration actually the original the correct configuration is argon 4s1 3d5 the reason behind this kind of configuration is because the d orbital as we explained it contains maximum of 10 electrons here in case of chromium it contains 5 electrons that means it's half filled now you would have studied about a stability con concept when we consider the subshells the completely filled d orbitals are more stable than the half filled and the half filled is more stable than partially filled completely filled meaning d10 half filled is d5 partially filled it can have d1 d2 d3 and till d4 and d6 d7 d8 and d9 so that means it is not it's neither half filled nor completely filled that you call it as partially filled so when we speak about its stability the completely filled d orbitals are more stable than the half filled the half filled is more stable than the partially filled because of the stability chromium has its original configuration as 4s1 3d5 now so one electron from the 4s orbital is shifted to the 3d because the energy level of 3d and 4s are more or less the same so an electron can be shifted from the 4s to the 3d the same concept is applied even for copper copper the atomic number is 29 so the original configuration is argon 4s1 and 3d10 but actually when we are working we we might work as argon 4s2 3d9 so 3d9 again the meaning is it's partially filled so this concept the partially filled stability concept will be applied for chromium and copper it is an exceptional case so even in case of copper we fill the orbital as 4s1 and 3d10 due to the stability concept so the completely filled orbitals are more stable now the question is is copper a transition element yes when we take its oxidation state cu plus you have the configuration as argon 3d10 4s0 if you take copper cu2 plus then the configuration is argon 4s0 and 3d9 that means the d orbital is incompletely filled so copper belongs to the transition element so as we have discussed earlier if it is a d block then the valence shell electron should enter into the d orbital if it is a transition element it should have the incomplete fi in incompletely filled d orbitals children i think you are very clear with this concept please work out few more electronic configurations so that you will have a clear idea how to work out and especially with case of chromium and copper you are supposed to work out and see and manganese which has the maximum oxidation state please work out that configuration also now you have to be very familiar with the subshells distribution of boss rule to distribute the electrons into the subshells which you have studied in your 11th class now along with this video we are attaching even the notes where 
few terminologies will be explained and few few more concepts uh, few prerequisite knowledges will be explained there so you can refer to those notes and before you come back for the next class that means the part 2 class you have to be very familiar with the concepts what all we have discussed in this class so that you will be able to understand in a better way um now along with this once when particular concepts is completed you can see few questions has been discussed here please try to work out all these questions so that before you come for the next class you will have uh, a very clear picture of what we have done here if you look at the questions are very very familiar which one of the d block element may not be regarded as transition element so you know very very well what is the answer is please go through these questions and try to answer these questions if you have doubts you can send it through to my mail id sita pillai 123 at gmail dot com so this video part 1 video completes with the introduction till the electronic configuration for the matriculation school it is from page 100 to 102 and for the cbse the lesson name is d block elements please go through this from the textbook so that if you have any doubts you can clear it send it to my mail id thank you children